Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. It is once again me, Zach, with what might be our final barony tier list for a very long time. Or at least, uh, last one that I can think of for the moment. So, today we're going to be doing something that's a little bit more silly than anything else, honestly. It is a tier list of skills in Baroni, the video game. Overall, uh, every skill in the game is good in its own ways. It accomplishes what it sets out to accomplish. There's not really any point to a tier list like this outside of maybe noting some of the ones that are better for as many characters as possible to learn. Like, if you're playing through and you really want to optimize your play style and stuff, we'll note some of the ones that are maybe a little bit broken in their own ways. But, by and large, just play the game. <laughs> and you'll do just fine. Not much else to say about that, really. Tier list-wise, I would say A through C are essentially great to okay, and D is bad. I'm going to be honest with you, I don't think there's much in the way of bad for uh, D tier, but maybe there's like one that could be argued. We'll get there. So, I won't be covering every single skill in great detail here. I'm just going to be covering some of the highlights of them. Um, I'm not even really using a guide for this one, because a lot of the skills are relatively straightforward. Um, you can just kind of look up this information in the game itself by clicking by going to the skill section in your inventory and looking at the skills, reading each of them, and it will give you all the information you, you need to know. Barony is actually great at communicating with you now. It tells you so many details about itself, so many n crunchy little numbers about the game. It's super helpful. But let's get started here. We're going to start with alchemy. As always, we're going to put them in B tier just while we talk about them for a second. Alchemy's big thing is that when you get to level 100, your potions become blessed. Now, as is pretty classic in RPGs, it's an A-tier skill. Uh, the biggest thing is that you can very easily uh, create potions of greater healing, or whatever they're called, or extra healing, which are crazy good, <laughs> okay? They're very powerful. Um... There's really no downsides to alchemy, all things considered. The only things that I'll note here about it are, A, maxing it out doesn't do a whole lot for you. Getting blessed potions is obviously really powerful if you are that focused on getting like the most powerful possible potions in the world, but generally speaking, you don't need that much. So most builds don't really need to focus that hard into alchemy. In addition, Getting to level 100 alchemy can actually be detrimental for you if you are a succubus or an incubus, because they don't like blessed potions as much as other people do, and it can be a bit uh, problematic for them. It should also be noted that if you are a vampire and you make uh, blessed water and drink it, you will die. It will explode you. That's holy water. It will hurt your skin. Keep that in mind. Outside of that, generally speaking, alchemy, not that exciting, but very, very solid. Difficult to learn, many people seem to think, and I sort of agree, but once you get the hang of it, pretty awesome. Difficult to get to level 100, though, it seems. You really, you really got to commit to it. Next up is appraisal. I always think that the wonky glasses are the tinkering skill. They are not, but the wonky glasses, appraisal... Uh, appraisal's awesome. Appraisal's S tier. Um, at level 100, you just instantly appraise any... I'm gonna try that sentence again. I'm very sorry about that. Holy... Whew, the words wanted to leave my mouth faster than my tongue would allow. So, appraisal, level 100, you instantly appraise anything that comes into your inventory, right? As soon as it touches you, you understand it at a deep molecular level. This is awesome. Uh, the big thing about appraisal is it's really good for leveling, because everybody is always appraising, as long as you have not complete garbage perception. Uh, you can get a couple levels of appraisal early by doing things like drinking unidentified potions like a sicko, or reading unidentified scrolls like an insane person would. 
This might light you on fire and end your run, or it might give you an appraisal level. I mean, these are the kinds of dice you gotta roll when you're playing Barony sometimes. By and large, appraisal though, it's solid, it's dependable, everybody should try and get it up to level 100 as fast as possible. If you're playing in multiplayer, I would highly recommend you pick one person to do the appraising early, max out their appraisal as fast as possible, and then everyone else starts doing a little bit on the side as well. By the end of the game, everyone will get to level 100, pretty much no matter how slowly you go at it. But it's good to get one person maxed out as quickly as possible so you can just know what everything is as soon as it touches that person. Next up is axes. Um, axes are okay. Overall, I think the axes are perfect in B tier. I'm not going to talk about the individual weapons too much in this video. Uh, this is about the skills more than anything. But axes are fine. They are... Axes are available very early in the game at decent quality. You can get the legendary artifact axe on level 1. Uh, Parashu, you can get it from Funny Bones. Very strong stuff there, and it has a slowing effect, which is pretty strong for sure. But by and large, I think axes are a nice B-tier weapon. Their early uh, effectiveness is good, their late game effectiveness is fine, by and large. Next up is blocking. Now blocking is one of the least interesting skills, I almost said spells, <laughs> one of the least interesting skills in the game, because the way you level it up is by trapping a rat or like a gnome in a corner and holding a shield up in front of their face while they desperately try and claw their way past you to escape screaming in trauma and rage the entire time um, that being said though it is one of the strongest skills in the game arguably the strongest getting your AC and block skill up to a high level means that you just don't take physical damage anymore after a certain point for some classes, it's pretty easy to reach that uh, level. Like monks start with a 50 in block skill. They have a pretty easy time of maxing that out and not even necessarily maxing it out. The advantage to maxing it out to getting level 100 is just that your uh, shields no longer take durability damage. That can be really cool. But by and large, the more cool thing about it really is that uh, getting just any AC bonus that's high enough will land you with like I think upwards of like plus 20 AC from blocking or something and then you just can't be hit by anything it's wild it's just wild stuff is it overpowered uh, arguably but it's also kind of boring to level so it's in kind of a bad spot right now um, good spot if you're just trying to min max though all right I'm just gonna throw that out there now I should note here, looking at some of these um, icons, some of these are a bit outdated, but this is the magic icon. It's mostly the same. No, sorry, the casting icon. It's mostly the same, I think, um, but a little bit different, a little bit less col colorful in this version. So if it looks a bit different than it does in your game, this is the casting skill. Casting is pretty powerful. Casting we're going to put at the top of B tier. Um, it affects predominantly whether or not you can successfully cast a spell, obviously. Most magic classes that have any kind of bonus to magic and or casting have a higher casting stat so that they are able to successfully play their characters without having a bunch of failed roles. Um, magic, the skill, affects your ability to learn new spells, so it's less important early on. Now, early... Having a high casting is nice, means you do more damage, and means that you have a better chance of casting, etc. All very solid. At very high levels of casting, by which I mean when you max it out, you also get a free Force Bolt spell that no longer costs mana. Um, if you see my spell tier list, the previous one before this, uh, this is a pretty good spell. It's reliable, it's solid, it's dependable. Every race in the game can get it. Goblins, who cannot nor l normally learn spells out of spell books, can get access to Force Bolt by simply getting their casting up to level 100, either through using staffs or spell books to cast other spells. By and large, I'm going to put casting in B tier, because it's about as dependable as most weapon skills and things like that. It's good. It's solid. It's great. 
no real complaints. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit and do the magic skill next because you really can't separate these two skills very easily. They are core to the magic playstyle. But the difference between them is pretty vast, with magic actually being the strongest skill in the game. Now normally, by itself, magic doesn't do much. Its big thing, its claim to fame, if you will, is that it lets you learn higher level spells. That's cool. The end. That's it. But when you get it to level 100, you get the Dominate spell. And I'm not going to talk about it a bunch here. Go see the spell tier list for my rant about the Dominate spell. But it's the strongest spell in the game. And it by itself kind of breaks tier lists. Uh, snaps them in half. Like twigs. So, it's the strongest. Block is great. Appraise is reliable. But magic is busted. It's not even about spell casting and like magic spells in the game. It's just about dominate, to be totally clear here. So next up we have leadership. Uh, what's funny about leadership is whenever I hear it, I always think of the feat from Dungeons and Dragons 3.5. And in that edition, the leadership feat was busted. It was so broken it had to be removed from like discussions about the meta of the game because Otherwise, you'd just be talking about leadership the whole time, right? In this game, I actually think it's more of a C-tier kind of deal. If you start with a good leadership, it's very solid. If you start with a good leadership, it's worth investing time into. If you don't, it can be a little bit more annoying to get it leveled up and can be a bit frustrating. Now, as you level up your leadership, the biggest advantages are A, that you get more followers. We are not going to talk about how Dominate breaks that in half but go see the spell tier list, I beg of you. Uh, but what we will talk about is how getting high leadership does also increase your followers' dexterity, which means they move very quickly, which can be very handy, actually. Especially if you have a lot of trolls or crystal golems or something following you, having them getting a speed boost, pretty helpful. Overall, though, if you're not leadership focused, it's not that important. It's it's uh, also affected by the charisma attribute, which is by far the weakest attribute. So even less reason to really care about it all that much. Next up, we have blunt blunt weapons. I actually think are a C tier. Uh, that might seem a bit strange. Blunt starts off very powerful, right? Because skeletons are weak to blunt. However, the issue is that as you go through the game, fewer things are weak to blunt, and the unique weapon for blunt weapons is uh, Shurur, which is a mace that gives mana regen. This means that for a class like the Cleric, it's very powerful. It's also pretty good on, I believe, the Sextant but not that important on most other ones. Like most of the time, if you have a powerful legendary artifact weapon, you want it to increase your damage, right? Uh, the ax is in B tier, partly because the legendary ax gives a slowing effect, right? Which is very useful, but not that powerful. Shurur's special attributes are that it talks to you and gives you mana regen, which is really cool, but, again, just not that good if you're playing an actual melee class, by and large. It's a fine weapon to choose, it's just not the best possible choice. Next up, we have another melee weapon, which is pole arms. Pole arms are one of the more common options that classes start with. The warrior starts with it, the healer, the wizard, uh, the wanderer, a couple others do as well, I believe. I'm not going to go through all of them, but... Lots of people start with polearm skills. Very common. Polearms are well represented throughout the entire game, either in the form of spears or halberds or polearms themselves, like actual sticks. Um, all of that, pretty dope. The unique artifact spear, Gungnir, is also one of the most reliable DPS options in the game. So I'm actually going to put it at the bottom of A tier. It's one of the two highest rated melee weapons in the game. Uh, because, and in fact, I think you could argue that, gun, that pole arms are a little bit better, because I find that pole arms are generally better in the dungeon itself, while also being quite good against bosses. And we are going to skip ahead to the next melee option to just round off the big four, 
which is swords, which are going up here as well. Swords, I think, are a little bit less reliable than polearms throughout most of the dungeon. But when you're comparing the legendary artifacts in particular, that gap is widened, where polearms are just always good. The special effect of Gungnir is that it like penetrates armor. It always is going to be dealing solid damage, pretty much no matter what you're fighting, or who, or what their resistances are. Swords, in terms of the unique sword, I can never remember the name of the artifact sword. It's like fucking Dern, Dernvir, Dwimver, Dwarf, I don't know. It's a magic sword. It's Excalibur, but in Baroni. And it does a booty load of damage to undead of any kind, which includes the liches that make up the game's current boss sets. I actually don't know if it works on Baphomet. That would... That's actually kind of an interesting question, but irrelevant to the current discussion. The point is, it outshines spears at boss fights, but in most of the dungeon, I think that spears are a little bit better, and swords are just slightly worse, just like a little bit worse. So let's get into the next one, which is range skill. This is where I'm going to get flame comments, because I'm putting the range skill at the bottom of C tier. Ranged combat is safe. Bows, crossbows, longbows, all of those <laughs> have infinite ammo, but you can find unique ammo throughout the dungeon in the form of quivers and bolts and such that give them special effects. They can kind of mimic spells a little bit like that. This is all well and good. I actually think that this is mostly fine, but the overall damage of the range skill is kind of pitiful. It can be difficult early game to find good ranged options, and a lot of the later game ranged choices are kind of mediocre. The artifact bow is what keeps them from being D tier, as well as crossbows. Crossbows have a high rate of fire, which smooths out the gameplay quite a bit, makes it a lot easier to just kind of kite things. The artifact bow has a chance to generate special types of arrows with every shot meaning you're basically always getting unique ammo. This is pretty good, and the legendary artifact bow, I would say, is probably B tier, but the skill as a whole is definitely C tier. Uh, this is not a rating of the different weapon, or the different artifact weapons, it's just that I think if we are talking about the weapon skills specifically, we need to talk about the best possible version of those skills. So. They barely make it out of D tier, mostly dragged there by crossbows and the legendary bow. Um, but yeah, next up is Sneak. And Sneak is going right there, and it's staying there, actually. I think that Sneak is a perfectly reasonable skill. Uh, it's definitely a B tier. If you're playing solo, it's easier to pull off. If you're playing multiplayer, it's more of a D-tier skill, just because your your dumb friends are not going to let you sneak as much as you might want otherwise, right? We all know how that goes. So, if you're wanting to do hardcore stealth, like max out your stealth, definitely play by yourself. Rogue, Wanderer, Ninja, and several others are all quite good at stealth right out of the gate, but... Anyone can do it, and really you probably should. It's one of those skills that it's good to take advantage of early, even if you aren't good at it specifically. Now next up is Swim. Swim is sort of in a weird spot. Um, I'm going to put it in D tier, because there's only one use for Swim that I really see personally, and that is leveling. So when you get your Swim to level 100, it allows you to walk on water and also lava. And as a note of interest, walking on lava does not hurt you. I do not know why. That seems like that would be an obvious thing. This is a mixed bag, though, because if you are on fire, you don't want to walk on the water like Jesus. You want to fall into the water and be extinguished, right? But you can't do that. So, again, bit of a mixed bag. Um... Vampires cannot swim unless they are playing as the shaman class and sh uh, shapeshift into a different animal or creature to get into the water. But uh, it's also not good for automatons to be in the water. Cools off their boiler, which is subpar for sure. Um, 
was there anyone else that didn't like the water? I think that was about it. But, you know, just keep that in mind. For them, the swim skill is either impossible to get, or if it's more difficult, it's still kind of worth it. But the only real purpose of the swim skill, in my opinion, is mostly just to allow you to get some extra levels by sitting in a pond. Which is cool. Absolutely. So next up is tinkering. And who buddy tinkering? Tinkering's going straight to the top, baby, let's go. It's an S-tier skill. Um, you could argue it's maybe like bottom of S tier, top of A tier kind of area, like here with alchemy, because I think you could make the same arguments for alchemy. But I think that because tinkering has a lower threshold than alchemy does, like it's hard to learn alchemy. Tinkering is a little bit more straightforward once you get the opportunity to mess around with it. I think I'm going to put tinkering in S tier. It's very solid though. Tinkering is great. Uh, you can find all kinds of funny videos online of people tossing down a bunch of fire traps and blowing up a god or something like that. Uh, f you know, fist fighting a bear with bear traps, that kind of stuff. And tinkering is what enables all of that nonsense. Um, it's a lot of fun. The biggest issues with tinkering are it's difficult to get access to early. One of the reasons why the rogue class is not higher tier on my tier list, personally, is because they have good tinkering skill, but they do not have access to a tinkering kit. Without a tinkering kit, you can't do tinkering, similar to the Alembic with the uh, Alchemy. But I find that Alembics are a lot more common than tinkering kits, which you often have to buy from a store and then repair up on your own time. So. By and large, kind of meh, but there's a lot packed into the tinkering skill that isn't just tied to the tinkering kit. You can also get your tinkering skill up to learn how to lockpick. You can get your tinkering skill up high enough that you find scrap in chests that you've lockpicked, uh, lock even, which is quite helpful. Being able to repair items with the tinkering kit is awesome, uh, though... There are quite a few things throughout the game that you actually can't improve the quality of, which are a bit strange. I'm not going to go over all of them here, but yeah, by and large, tinkering, solid skill. Um, it's not quite as reliable as appraise or block. You can block with torches, and you can appraise no matter who you are. Anybody can get their skill up high enough to get dominate from the magic skill. So tinkering is definitely bottom tier here, um, and it has... It is outshone by some of the stuff that alchemy can do, but tinkering is just very versatile. It, it's a 10 out of 10 top tier skill for sure. Next up is trading. Um, trading is in C tier as well. I think here is fine, honestly. It's, it's okay. If you get your trading skill up, you can sell things back at a profit. Um, or at least break even. It's fine. The biggest advantage to trading is getting access to the four secret inventory slots that every shopkeeper has, because that's usually where they, they keep their good stuff. Even if they sell something like hats, and you don't want any of their hats, they might sell healing potions in that secret pocket that they have. So, yeah, by and large, trading, it's kind of boring. It, it is exactly what you'd expect, but it's fine. I put it in kind of a similar category to the, the, I almost said to the duck, good lord, to the swimming skill, where it's good for getting some levels, it might come in handy on the occasional playthrough, but it's not going to be something you do every time, and it's also particularly good for certain classes and races. Humans and automatons are great at doing trades because shopkeepers won't attack them innately, which is fantastic, and... Uh, it's great for the merchant class specifically. It's also pretty good for the mechanist and the rogue if they are doing tinkering stuff. Because, much like with alchemy, a lot of times you're going to need to buy stuff to get the most out of your tinkering. And in point of fact, I guess I should note right there that the brewer and the goat man as a race in general both will enjoy getting a bit more value out of the trade skill as well for those reasons. But it doesn't generally impact your gameplay very much. It's definitely towards the bottom of C tier, but I do think it's more useful than Swim. 
Next up is Unarmed, and I'm very torn on this one. Unarmed is in a weird spot. So we already have the four other melees on here, right? And I'm actually, I just feel like it goes here. Unarmed is really powerful early on. If you start as like a monk or something, Unarmed shreds through early game. And there's a lot of ways to boost your Unarmed skill that people don't really know about. Like, ring enhancements will affect how powerful your Unarmed damage is, right? That's pretty cool. You can get blessed uh, Iron Knuckles and stuff as you go through the game, and they will do tons of damage seemingly but the later the game goes the weaker the unarmed skill gets it does not have any kind of legendary weapon there is none the only legendary gauntlets that exist are the magic resist ones that you get from the sokoban level in the uh in the desert floors in the temple area so meh right like unarmed is just kind of mediocre compared to the other weapon skills it falls flat I don't want to even put it on the same level as Mace or Ranged, because Ranged is really good sometimes. It's very safe and reliable, at least. And Maces, at the very least, have several classes that actually do get quite a bit of value out of the extra mana regen from this artifact, from Sharur. Um, in addition, all of the legendary artifacts are infinite durability. Unarmed doesn't have anything like that. The unique level 100 effect of unarmed where you can kind of paralyze things with like fully charged sneak attacks or something is powerful but by the time you get it it's going to be so late in the game it's just not really going to matter that much by and large I, f I feel personally like unarmed has been kind of left behind it feels like it's almost too good early game and then super mediocre late game um, I've played through the game as Monk and as a punch-focused Shaman and beaten the bosses with both. And I, when I switched over and played a ninja that focused on swords one time, and of note, I didn't use the artifact sword. I was using a normal sword. I shredded the final bosses way faster, like in a fifth of the time. Um, and that was like, that was really going ham on my own arm skill. I mean, I was a troll for one of those play playthroughs, for God's sake. It just felt a bit underwhelming in comparison to the, all the other ones. I do think that you can make a comparison to the mace, because if you don't have, uh, if, I mean, if you do have the legendary mace, but you're not getting any value from the mana regen, it can feel a bit sad. But the way that damage works in this game where weapons are kind of like are multiplied by your uh skill damage and such having any weapon is basically better than being unarmed round about the time that you fight the baron you know about halfway through the game maybe even before that in like the desert area is where unarmed starts to fall off now of note every skill on this list is good in its own situations obviously i think swimming is kind of the weakest but like, unarmed, like, swimming is down here, you gotta understand. It's not very good at all. Unarmed is fine, it's just a bit weaker than the other ones as the game goes on. All of these play styles can work. The monk, notably on my own tier list, is an S-tier class, right? It is very, very low risk, very, very high reward. So overall, I don't hate unarmed. I just think that it falls off a bit in comparison to the other ones and i kind of wish that it would get some kind of buff to itself at some point but that's it that's all the skills that are in the game right now uh just doing a quick eyeball check of the list that i've pulled up off to the side shows nope uh this tier list still seems to be largely up to date with all of the new stuff so that's great um thank you guys for tuning in this is probably going to be the last barony tier list that I do for a while because I've kind of covered everything that I really care about. Um, the only other thing I might do is make my own tier list of enemies or something like that, but that would be a lot of work, so I'm not sure if I'm going to be doing that anytime soon. But hey, you know what? If you would like to see me do that, let me know in the comments. Maybe I'll throw something together. But for now... Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching. Don't forget, like, comment, and subscribe. 
really lets me know that you guys like this content. It seems pretty popular. I'm going to keep putting out some Barony stuff. And in point of fact, I plan on recording some real Barony gameplay footage and putting that up. In fact, it might already be up before this video goes out. So maybe I've just dated this video. Oopsie doodles. But either way, until next time, see ya.